everyone. Welcome. My name is Lucia Radetsky. I am a Christian health coach and your servant tonight sharing the word of God and sharing some reflections about what's going on in the world and about how we can deal with circumstances that usually happen around us when we are walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a person that have never yet repented and seek the Lord, I encourage you to drop the pride and take a moment to really reflect on those things that you know you have been doing that are not in alignment with who you want to be. Because ultimately, there's a part of you that knows that something is not good for you. So I encourage you to seek in your heart and to talk with God about those things, repent for those things, and truly embrace, embrace that path of transformation. For he will surely finish what he has started on you. So you can trust that if you give yourself to him and if you tell him, Lord, I want to be better, I want to be transformed, I want to be changed, he will do what he said he will do. Okay? Even if you don't have the strength, he has it. So he is stronger when you are weak. So I encourage you to take that moment to be honest with yourself, to repent about those things that hurt, that you have done, even things that others have done to you and you have permitted, and that you can truly welcome a change in your life, a repentance. It's only real when you are changing. So my friends, let's dive deep into um, this, this particular short piece of scripture I want to read to you today, which is in Luke chapter 17. Jesus warns of offenses. Then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. If I will be better for him, it will be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Now, here's the thing, and this is very important, my friends. Saying, I repent, is not just saying to say something. It is something that you mean. So if somebody comes to you seven times saying, I repent, you just need to see if there's a change, if the person is actually trying at least to change, because you can fall into sin. And, you know, we may fall sometimes, we may stumble sometimes, but the beauty of repentance is that it's a process of changing. So there needs to be a process when you are actively in that repentance trying to change. Even if it's hard for you, right? You're trying to let an addiction go. You're trying to let a habit go, a pattern go, a way of thinking, a way of behaving, right? But that can only be true that you are repenting if you are indeed trying to change. Yeah? So I want to keep reading here um, in, in, in this part. In Luke chapter 17, verse 6, And the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it will obey you. So at the end of the day, that repentance comes attached to faith because it's going to be faith in the ability that you have to change. Faith in the ability that the Lord has over all things to change other people. What is going to make possible that that repentance is real and that forgiveness can be actually so you see the lord is really faithful to root for you in the meantime when you are still unable to completely change he's gonna have patience with you and in the same way you can have patience with other people when they offend you the thing is that in order for you to do that you need to develop um 
confidence in you and what the Lord sees in you, how he sees you, what he says you are, so you don't feel moved and shaken by the offense. So people that you love may come and offend you in one way or in other, but you have to find ways to to block that spirit of offense and allow forgiveness to come to pass. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean that you won't have boundaries. It doesn't mean that if somebody has been abusive to you and they keep doing the same thing and then repenting and doing the same thing and repenting that you have to hurt yourself. You have to forgive your brother because in the same way, or your sister, in the same way, you may fall and come back to Christ and say, I'm sorry, and do the same thing again, right? So in the same way you do that, in the same way, your brother or sister may offend you and you have to forgive. Now, at the same time, in the same way, the Lord is going to be checking up on you and helping you heal so you may not keep doing the same thing again and again and you may change you have to put an effort into stop doing that into realizing what is it that you're doing wrong what is that that you're missing in you in, in this fall in this sin that you're falling into and you have to intentionally find self-control to not do it again then in the same way that person that is offending you also needs to do certain changes and here's the, here's the thing, and this is very important. When you forgive this person wholeheartedly, you forgive. This person is not going to leave without judgment, you know? But this is not judgment that you are calling. It's not you giving this person an ultimatum or giving this person a rejection or a judgment, you know? You're just forgiving this person and, yeah, probably setting boundaries and not, you know, remaining in a relationship um, that is too close if this person keeps hurting you, but you forgive and you pray for this person from a place of truly love. You want, you want the best for this person, right? You don't try to hurt this person. You don't try to take revenge. You don't try to offend them back or remain in this bitterness and offense, but instead you truly want the best for them. But know that when you are able to do this, just as the Lord did with Jesus Christ, what is going to happen is what he said. It would be better for him, the one who offends, it would be better for him if a milestone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Whoa. So here the Lord is being very specific. He's saying to you, that whoever is offending you, he is going to bring judgment upon this person. You are those little ones. The little ones are those who are growing in the faith. His followers, his people, his sheep. Us, we are those little ones. So here's the thing. We don't have to, we don't have to, carry any grudge with anyone. We can just bless them and forgive them and let go as many times as they need that, as many times as they come in repentance to pray for, to, to ask forgiveness because that's what we do. But if a person is hurting you, the Lord is going to bring judgment. Now, it's not up to you to be seeking for that judgment, though. It's not up to you to be like, okay, is it the judgment here now? Is this person suffering already? <laughs> That's not forgiveness. That is not forgiveness. So you have to truly, truly, truly let it go and truly, truly, truly be okay if that person is happy, you know? Even if it's an ex or a narcissist or, you know, a parent or whoever has hurted you, a boss, whoever it is that is getting away, getting away, right, with things, they're not really getting away. Nobody's going to get away with anything. But the Lord is going to take in account those who repent and those who walk into trying to intentionally walk humbly with Him. Trying to intentionally, with self-control, trying to walk out of sin and into sanctification. And now, 
This only can happen through him with the Holy Spirit, not because of our righteousness. Let's clarify that right away. Only because of his righteousness, we can be cleansed. We can become better. We can repent and change. And, and it's more likely a process. It's always a process. It's, it's a process. So next time that somebody offends you, no, this offense, this offense may come. But that offense, it's actually going to be accounted as judgment for the offender. And for you, an opportunity to forgive as Christ, as Christ forgave you. So when the offense come, comes, you know that as a child of God, as a little one, your job is not to remain bitter or in a grudge or angry or feel bad about it or feel like there's something wrong with you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nothing wrong with you. Your job is to understand that the Lord warned you about this. And that you can embrace that moment of offense, knowing that it's prophecy being fulfilled. You can forgive even seven times a day if that person offended you that much and repent. And you have to understand that justice will come to pass. The more you give the opportunity to others, the more the Lord is going to bless you and give you the opportunity. This doesn't mean that you have to remain in a situation of violence, narcissistic abuse, whether that is psychological, emotional, in any, any kind of abuse, financial. It's not. It's not what the Lord wants for you. It's not your portion. He's not calling you to be a victim. Okay, let's get that out of the table. So you can set boundaries. You don't have to remain in, ab in an abusive relationship. But the good news is that he will take care of the offender. He will take care of what's going on in your life. And over all things, he will set you free from that. The more you forgive. Okay? So don't hold a grudge. Bless your offenders. Pray for them. And allow them to receive what they saw. That's it. And if that is good because of their repentance, because they are truly repenting and changing, praise God. Praise God. We want all of our enemies to repent and be saved. We truly want that. And if they are unrepentant, there's nothing you can do about it. Everybody has their own path with God, and all we can do is to pray for them. So, my friend, I hope this message finds you at the right time. Please give it a thumbs up, share it, give it also a, a, a little comment so more people can feel your love and your testimonies. And thank you for being here. I love you very much. Have a great night. Bye.